The Camon series by Techno has always been about the camera experience and the Camon 30 this year comes with a 50 megapixel primary camera as against the 64 megapixel lens we had on the Camon 20 of last year. On paper, it might look like a problem, but the good thing is that I've been using the Camon 20 Pro that has the same 64 MP lens from last year. And in this video, we are definitely going to compare images and see if it's a downgrade or not. We are getting an upgraded chipset with the Helio G99 Ultimate and some bits of new software features because you are getting Android 14 out of the box. The design is refreshed and you need to know that the Sony IMX890 camera sensor is preserved for the Camon 30 Pro 5G and the Camon 30 Premier. If you think about the price you are paying for the Camon 30, then it's fair to see why you are not getting the Sony camera sensor. The phone costs 260,000 Naira and if you do the math with the current exchange rate in Nigeria, it is selling for slightly above $200. For around that same price, you can pick up the Redmi Note 13, Samsung Galaxy A25, the Infinix Note 40 and some of them might offer more value for money, especially the Infinix Note 40. I'll try to make comparison videos and i will love to know in the comment section which one will you like to see first. Let us know in the comments. Inside the box, you are getting the needed accessories including a plastic case, not a silicon TPU case, this plastic case is a bit hard. You are also getting a 45 watt charger, a USB-C cable, SIM ejector tool, screen protector and some documentation. There isn't an earpiece or earbud like you are getting with the Camon 20 Pro 5G. Since the phone was announced at the WWDC in Barcelona, I've been impressed by the design. Holding it felt different though because it's a bit heavy when placed next to the Camon 20 Pro. You can clearly see the design change. The Camon 30 looks completely different. If you handed anyone these two phones without him knowing about them, he won't say that the Camon 30 is a successor to the Camon 20 Pro. The back of the phone is made of glass which of course is premium but it is really slippery and I can't see myself using this phone without a case. I have the white color option with me here but there are two other color options which is black and brown. The brown color option has leather and I believe it should be a bit lighter in the hand. The back of the phone won't stain as much since it's glass and even if it stains, you can wipe it off. However, there is a glossy part by the side just near the camera module. It shows up stains when your fingers accidentally touch the parts. The circular camera ring houses three cameras and it has some sort of texture on the outside. The texture is more like a zoom ring that we get on professional DSLR cameras. You can't twist or turn this one though. It is not one of those huge camera rings you see on other phones. It is fairly minimal and it doesn't wobble a lot on flat surfaces. The red dot you see by the top left side is the smart breathing light and it serves as an indicator when Ella the voice assistant comes on or when there is a call and the screen is turned off. The easiest way to have it come up is when you plug the phone in for charging. The light also comes up when you are recording videos but for that you have to turn it on in the camera settings. The position of the red dot on the Camon 30 Pro 5G is different. It is located between the camera module and the glossy part. It is one of the quickest ways you can identify the phones. There is an IR blaster on the phone and you can use it to control electronics at home or maybe at your workplace. It is the first time I'm seeing an IR blaster on a techno phone. You get two speakers with Dolby Atmos and they are loud. The frame of the phone is plastic and you can see that there are fingerprint stains all over it. If you apply the case though, then you are protected from the fingerprint stain. The phone supports dual 4G SIM cards and you also get a slot for an SD card. Thankfully, there is also a headphone jack on the phone as that is missing on the more premium phones. Design and build quality is great but the size and weight might be a bit too much for some people. Talking about size, we have a 6.78 inch AMOLED display with a full HD resolution and 120 as refresh rate. It's an AMOLED display so you get those deep blacks and other colors that appear to be nice on the display. It is not a display you can use with one hand because of its size but at the same time the size makes it comfortable for gaming and streaming content. Pairing it side by side with the Camon 20 Pro, you will see that the colors tend to be a bit better on the Camon 30. There is an optical under display fingerprint scanner on the phone. It's not the fastest in the world but it gets the job done. It always unlocks the phone without any hiccups. Outdoors, it can get up to 1300 nits which is quite bright enough. Streaming content is about good on the display. It is responsive to touch but the haptics feedback you get while typing isn't really different from the display of the Camon 20 Pro. The bezels are not symmetrical around the display and there isn't any significant reduction from the Camon 20 Pro. Does that hinder user experience? No. We take YouTubers just like to point out things. It is a flat display and it is sharp and also contrast. The camera cutout at the top also doesn't get in the way. 
while you are using the display. The display is on par with most of the phones it is competing with. It comes with a 50 megapixel primary camera with an optical image stabilization and it also has two additional lenses at the back. The two other lenses include a 2 megapixel depth sensor and a light sensor. I honestly don't know what the light sensor is doing there. Up front, we get a 50 megapixel selfie camera and I started by pairing it with the Camon 20 Pro 4G. The results were impressive and if you are upgrading because of the camera, then I don't think you need to. In most cases, I prefer the images from the Techno Camon 20 Pro. There is a 100MP mode on the Camon 30 and it uses pixel binding to combine multiple photos to increase the level of details in every picture. The selfie images and portraits are also not far apart. If you own the Camon 20 from last year, then it's safe to say there isn't need for an upgrade. Images generally look detailed and even in night mode, it is impressive. For the selfie, you get 50 megapixel camera like I stated earlier and it's also decent. Shots are detailed in both low light and well lit environments. For the price, I can't complain. While the camera is impressive, you can only shoot 2K 30fps videos with the front and back cameras. Ultra steady mode only works at 1080p 30 frames per second. There is a dual mode for shooting with the front and back camera at the same time and you also get a number of other features in the camera app. Most phones powered by the Helio G99 Ultimate or a closed chipset come with a 108 megapixel primary camera. We have it on the Techno Spark 20 Pro Plus, Infinix Note 40, Redmi Note 13 and even the Infinix Note 40 Pro. I assume Techno went with the 50MP lens here to match the Sony IMX sensor we have on the more expensive Camon 30 series phones. The phone is running on Android 14 and HRS 14.0 is the user interface. The interface looks refreshed coming from Android 13 that is on the Camon 20 Pro. And you also get some useful AI features. Before I forget, there is some kind of material U implementation in the settings where you get to change the color of notifications and other elements to match your wallpaper. You can create wallpapers using AI with a prompt but internet connection is required for it to work. You also get a number of other wallpaper options. The always on display gives you some options including some cute pets or you can even go further to create an emoji that will appear when your screen is dim. The lock screen can also be customized to some extent. You get the dynamic port and most of its functionality are similar with the breathable light at the back. You can also set the phone up to require a password before it's shut down. This feature is really useful in case your phone gets stolen. You get floating window and split screen with apps that support the feature. You also get repair mode in the privacy settings and you can activate it when you want to take the phone to a technician if it's faulty. He won't have access to your personal data but you'll be able to access the phone. You also get to play with the status bar and customize the icons you want to be displayed there. During WhatsApp calls, you can play with some stuff and even change the background. You can also access your WhatsApp call log directly from the phone dialer. There are a lot of features and I'm working on a video to show you the hidden features on the phone. So subscribe to the channel so you are going to be the first person to see that video when it's live. In terms of software updates, there is nothing from Techno yet. There are rumors of an Android 14 update for the Camon 20 Pro but I'm yet to receive it on my unit here. Let's talk about the AI features on the phone and it mostly has to do with Ella. There is live transcription when communicating with someone in another language while texting. Ella is also powered by ChatGPT and the voice assistant can write scripts or even business feasibility studies on your behalf. While scrolling to your favorite website, you can select text and ask AI to summarize or look it up for you. You tap and hold on an image with text and it will allow you to copy the text. It will be useful for students who snap a lot of pictures of handouts. There are some AI features that are reserved for the Camon 30 Pro 5G and Camon 30 Premier like the AIGC portrait in the camera app and the object eraser, I'm sure you won't get it on the regular Camon 30. The phone is powered by the MediaTek Helio G99 Ultimate which is the same chip on a number of phones around its price category. My unit here has 8GB RAM and 256 gb storage space which is sufficient enough. On top of that, you can expand the storage space and RAM on the phone. There is a model out there with 12GB RAM and it can be further expanded to 24GB of RAM with memory fusion. Performance has been as I expect, it's swift, opens up app as required and I was able to play some games with the phone. The new Call of Duty Mobile Warzone was playable at low graphics setting. The OG Call of Duty ran smoothly and the experience was really smooth. I played the games for a while and the phone didn't overheat thanks to the new cooling system Techno used on the phone. Casual scrolling on the phone is smooth and is mostly on par with other phones that I've tested using the same processor. 
Will I recommend this for gaming? It's a yes and no. While it's going to play almost any game, the experience won't always be the best, especially with the graphics part. The battery is 5000mAh and it supports 45 hours charging. It takes around an hour to charge the phone from 0 to 100 and you can expect a whole day of battery life on the phone. You can get up to 8 hours of screen on time if you are someone who is always on their phone. Battery is up there with the rest and you can expect it to charge faster than others around its price. While the Techno Camon 30 is a decent phone, the price category it falls under puts it under a lot of pressure. There are other options like the Infinix Note 40 that offers wireless charging for almost the same price. The Samsung Galaxy A25 is another contender with its software. Overall, it is a solid option and hopefully, Techno will send at least 2 years of software updates on the phone. That's it for this video and click on the video showing on the screen right now to see me compare the Infinix Note 40 to the Techno Spark 20 Pro Plus. I'll see you in that video.